الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وآله وصحبه أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome to a new episode of Light Upon Light Today inshallah we are going to discuss few verses from Surah Al-Ankabut, the spider, chapter 29, Surah Al-Rum, the Romans, chapter 30, and Surah Luqman, chapter 31. Luqman was known as a wise man. So in Surah Al-Ankabut, the spider, verse 41, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that those who take gods beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or those who take protectors other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are very similar to the spider who builds for herself a spider web which is so frail and flimsy, so weak. So the verse reads, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem مثل الذين اتخذوا من دون الله أولياء كمثل العنكبوت اتخذت بيتا The parable or the similitude of those who take protectors other than Allah is that of the spider who builds to itself a house وإن أوهن البيوت لبيت العنكبوت لو كانوا يعلمون But surely the frailest and the flimsiest of houses is the spider's house, if they but knew. In this verse, there is also a very interesting scientific fact. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كَمَثَلِ الْعَنْكَبُوتِ اتَّخَذَتْ It refers to the fact that it's the female spider who builds the house, not the male, it's the female. So think about the protectors you take other than Allah, are they going to help you when you are in need? Do you think that sustenance comes from your employer? It doesn't come from Allah. Do you think that sustenance comes from your husband, not from Allah? So remember, please, that the protectors you take beside Allah or other than Allah will not help you at the time of need. Now let's go to Surat Ar-Rum, chapter 30, the Romans, verse 21. Whenever I conduct the marriage of any Muslim couple, I always read this verse. And you will also find that the majority of the Muslims, when they have a marriage, they print this verse on the invitation cards. We need to understand this verse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and among his signs is this, that he created for you mates from among yourselves, that you may dwell in tranquility with them, and he has put love and mercy between your hearts. Verily, in that are signs for those who reflect. Inna fi dhalika so let's reflect together upon these signs. And among his signs, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he created for you, spouses, mates, from among yourselves, with the same nature, in the same way you feel hungry, she feels hungry, in the same way you feel tired, she feels tired. In the same way you feel you want to love, she also wants to love. The purpose of this creation and this relationship between a husband and wife that they may dwell in tranquility with them. لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا Sakana means something which is very quiet. That's why Allah refers to the night Night is very quiet. Everything is quiet during the night. So it is your responsibility as husband and wife to ensure that the house you live in 
is, is a source of peace and tranquility because unless we have peace at home, there will be no peace in the whole world. So the man, when he returns home, he must find the house a source of peace and tranquility. And the same applies to the woman. So there is no point in nagging each other or arguing with each other and then creating problems and shouting and fighting and then it will become like a war zone rather than a source of peace and tranquility. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to say and he has put love and mercy between your hearts. The two words in Arabic are mawadda wa rahma. Mawadda. One of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-wadud. The one who loves his servant so much. So mawadda here means I want to be with my wife all the time. I wish if she is with me here. When I leave in the morning to go to work, I am so anxious. I want to go back home as soon as I finish work to be with her. And that's why this feeling of being together, the feeling that even you miss her while she is next to you, while you are looking at her, you miss her. Can we develop this feeling among ourselves as husbands and wives? to ensure that our love will continue forever, the love which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed in our hearts, which made us marry each other, should continue forever. And the best way to do that is through mercy. So the next attribute is warahma. Again, one of the attributes of Allah is ar-Rahman, ar-Rahim, source of mercy, the most compassionate, the most gracious, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he placed mercy. So we have to be merciful towards each other. We have to be kind to each other. I shouldn't ask my wife to do something which I know it is so difficult. I shouldn't have my dinner and retire and sit in the lounge watching the television while the poor woman is clearing the table and doing the washing up and then she is preparing the breakfast for everybody in the morning. This is unacceptable in Islam. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to take part in the daily activities in his house والسلام, When Aisha was asked, she said, كان في مهنتي أهلي. He used to do help in the house. And when the time for prayer comes, he will leave and go to the mosque and he said, خيركم خيركم لأهلي, وأنا خيركم لأهلي. The best among you is the best to his wife. And I am the best to my wife. So this mawadda, this sort of love and mercy, which Allah placed in the hearts of the husband and the wife, should be earned after marriage. So love after marriage is to be earned, not to be taken for granted. The love Adam and Eve had for each other was the reason for us being here today in spite of the fact they lost everything they had. So love or true love lasts a lifetime. It goes through different shapes because we grow up, we get older, we have grandchildren, we have more problems and so on. But remember, this is the love which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed in the hearts of the man and the woman to make them love each other and come to each other and be one unit. So when there is a problem, we must try to solve the problem. We must face the problem, not to run away from the problem and say, oh, I don't love this woman anymore. I'm going to leave her. Prophet Sallallahu said, do not look for faults at your wife. Look for the positive aspects and blow them up so they cover all faults. And if we do that, believe me, we will have peace within our homes and then inshallah we'll have peace worldwide. Thank you for being with me. Please join me after the break. Wassalamu alaikum.